Hey there and welcome back to the Code Drinkers channel for a brand new video. By the time we record this video, .NET 6 is almost out, of course including C Sharp 10 and Visual Studio 2022. In fact, what you see on screen is already the Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition preview, of course, because the full edition is not there yet or it is not globally released. And I think it's high priority right now to actually take a sneak peek and look into what actually is coming towards us in .NET 6 and of course C Sharp 10 as the new version of the C Sharp language. And as a first thing that I want to take a look into, it's actually something very, very easy, but in my opinion, or for me at least, I think it's very, very convenient. And this is the concept of global usings. So let's get in, into it and see exactly what this means. And in order to, base, to better understand what global usings are all about, I have here prepared a very, very basic setup. And let's take a look at that. It's actually, we have modeled, I would say, three different layers within this same project. In this case, of course, in real application, you would have them in, in separate project mostly. But for right now and for our purpose, it's actually what we need to demonstrate how powerful actually global usings are. So what we have is a model, which is a customer. Then we have a customer repository, which of course has a method that returns a customer. And then we have a customer service that creates a new instance of the repository. Of course, we don't use interfaces here. As said, right now, I just want to concentrate on the global usings, not on anything else. So here we have a new instance of the customer repository and we return a customer. Now let's go in our, let's say front-end application, which in this case happens to be a console application. We have here already a console write line, and I would like to take a look and write a few lines of code. Now, if you wonder where is the namespace and the program.cs class, well, this is actually right now or in Visual Studio 2022 with .NET 6, when you create new projects, they uh, take advantage of, um, of a feature that was actually released in C Sharp and .NET uh, in the previous releases. And this is the top level statement. So for the applications and for the classes that are actually an entry point to an application, you don't have to specify anything. You just can start and write code and that's it. And this is exactly what happens here. This is why this is a perfectly correct program and it works. If we click here, oh, probably we have here an error somewhere. Of course, I have forgotten a semicolon. But this is once again a perfectly, perfectly workable prog uh, program. So we can see the hello world right now. Okay, let's go back then to this program.cs class and let's do a few things here. So here, for instance, I would like first of all to get a service. So var service equals new customer service. And of course, what we have to do right now is to add a using at the top. And then Using this service, I would like to have here var customer equals, and I would say I would use the service right now. And I have a method there which is called process customer, which will use actually the repository to get a customer. And here, what I can do is then console write line. And what I would like to do here, I would like to write a customer.name in the console. So that's actually it for the application itself. Nothing very, very fancy or complicated. Here is the name of the customer, which is John Doe. So everything works fine. However, right now, what we have done here, we needed to add this using. It's actually what happens every time that we actually define some types. So for instance, if I say here, I want a customer explicitly, then I have here to add this customer, like using, using services and using models. And of course, also in this customer repository, I, need, I needed a using for the models namespace. I need a customer service. I need a using for the models and of course, for the repositories uh, namespaces. And here, let's take a look. The problem is, or one thing that happens really often in most of the production applications is that you have files where you get a lot of usings at the top and they those files get really cluttered and are messy and it's actually very, very hard to, to look at them. So instead of having a bunch of, I don't know, 10 lines, 20 lines of usings, we can just extract them here right now as global usings. Let me show how this can work. We can create a new class here directly in our project and let's call this class 
global using. And for instance, here we can get rid of all that we have here, so we don't need anything. But let's instead add here the following usings with the global keyword at the beginning. So we have here a global using, and we want usings with models. We want a global using usings dot repositories, and we want a global using. And of course, usings and uh, services. So that's actually everything. So what we have done is we have created a new file in which we have defined some global usings. And now let's take a look at what we can actually do with this. We can just get rid of all this using. So this we don't need anymore. So we can just focus on our code. And if we go then in the other files in customer, of course, here we don't use any of those, so we can get rid of them. Then if we go in the customer repository uh, here, once again, we use the models, but we don't need it. We can just get rid of everything. And of course, if we go in services, then we can once again get rid of everything. So once again, we have created here this global usings uh, .cs file in which we have added actually our usings with the global keyword at the beginning. And what this actually does is that for the entire project, it will actually use and import these usings in each of the code files that we might have. So we don't have to add them manually in each file. We just add them once and then are globally available throughout the project without any other problems. And we could even actually go one step further because we have here this console write line. And what we could do here is, for instance, we could even go here in the global usings and say here a uh, global. Uh, but I have also to specify or to write it correctly. So global static using system dot console. Okay, just one second. Sorry, it's after this one so it's global using static and we say that we want to use the console statically and what we can actually do right now is we can get rid of the console so every time we want to print something on the console we can just simply use right or right line and that's it that's how powerful actually those global usings are so it they help us really unclutter our code files because at least the most commonly used usings throughout a project can be extracting uh, can be extracted in such a global usings file and then you can simply use it you don't have to really take care about them anymore and manually add them in each file that you might create and by the way the name global usings is not something i would say hard coded or you you must name it that way no that's not true you can name that file really the way that you want as long as you provide these usings with a global keyword at the beginning, they will work and uh, there will not be a problem. However, you might have to be cautious with this, especially when you define uh, using statics, uh, because of course we use the console statically here and this might create some problem with the performance. So you might be, you might need to be very careful with that. Now, one other thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, th these global usings are working within a project uh, with all the namespaces that are part of the project. And if you install NuGet packages, you can even add uh, usings for the namespaces from the NuGet packages that you, uh, uh, that you install. However, if you have several projects in your solution and you add projects as a reference, global usings with the namespaces from other projects that were added as a reference are not working. So, there is this this uh, this very very little uh, thing that maybe will get addressed in the future, but for now this is not working. So global usings across project references seems to not work right now. But other than that, you can feel free to extract in these global usings files really whatever type of usings you want, and this would help you unclutter your files. So take a look how neat our program.cs file looks like here in this case with no using at all and also with this right line without specifying the console. Now, that's kind of it. It's nothing more to it. 
if you want to use it you're welcome to do that this in my opinion this is a very nice feature that uh, that actually make, makes your files uh more readable and in the end i guess it's it's also better to track or easier to track exactly what dependencies uh, you have in your project because you don't have to look throughout all the code files that you might have in that project so you can take a look at just one single file and see exactly what usings actually are you using thank you very much for watching and if you did enjoy this video don't be shy and hit the thumbs up button and of course subscribe if you haven't because there are a lot of other videos here on this channel and we try to create a lot of videos then uh, maybe each uh, two day we try to pub uh, or each second day we try to publish a new video so if you want to to stay up to date with what's new here on this channel and the videos that we are doing and the live session uh, or the live coding sessions that we are doing then just subscribe and also maybe uh, uh, use the notifications for this channel to be always up to date and if you think you might have a colleague that might benefit from this feel free to just uh, share or spread the word and share the knowledge and let them know about uh, what you liked uh, and about these kind of new features that uh, that might help you and your team uh, write uh, or have cleaner files or at least files that it's really easier to look at once again thank you very much for watching and until the next time i wish you the very best